this is my furnace vessel. Um, it actually had ghee in it. Ghee, G H W E, uh, butter basically. So the bottom end, which is that end, it's really thin, a little bit of butter in it. Um, I was hoping to plasma cut the damn thing and smell cooking butter in the air, but I decided to cut it because I need something more controlled. Um, this should be good and scary at the same time. So I'm going to be getting an angle grinder with a cutting wheel, sinking into it, and then, believe it or not, with a wood cutting jigsaw, with a hacksaw blade, I think there's a, there's a metal cutting blade for the jigsaw, I'm going to be going around. So I'm going to be creating a hole, sinking into it, and then going around and turning it and everything else like that. Uh, putting in this line, that took quite a while. Measuring with the tape across lots of points and then a small little metal ruler and dip, dip, dip the whole way along. My back got quite sore bending over the whole time doing it. However, it should be good. As you can see here behind, here's the other refractory materials and everything else. Um, there's my wall, there's my light stuff, there's my heavy stuff, and there's all the bits of steel. Wish me luck. So, the genius that I am, after I adjusted this, I forgot, and I turned off the camera to do that, I forgot to turn it back on, didn't I? So I was talking to myself like an idiot while doing this, thinking the camera was done. But, this is what we get. Look, I can't believe it's not butter. It's not actually butter, it's ghee, so I can just pull a little bit off. It smells exactly like butter. It's actually just milk salts, and that's what was in this originally. So, um, can't eat it now. Not that you'd want it, it tastes pretty terrible. Butter's had a few things added to it to make it a little bit more palatable. Um, but it's been so cold here in Melbourne that it's totally refrigerated. As you can see, that's still got good colour because it's, it's, it's been really cold. Um, there we go. So I screwed up a little bit, as you can see here, because I dived the blade in a bit sideways, just slightly. Um, it looks worse than what it did when I first did it. But the rest of the cut with the jigsaw went beautifully. Uh, really, really did. Th that jigsaw blade, great. Um, so glad I did it. It's just slight places where I varied very, very slightly, but I just neaten it up with a grinder. I may, may not even need to do that. I just, it's, it's such a good cut. So, there you go. That's actually going to be the size of it. Crucible in there, and then a lid on top of that as well. Whew. Hopefully I got that right. So, one of the reasons why I was able to do that drum cut really well is because I didn't buy a piece of crap for a jigsaw. So I just wanted to show you, for example, this jigsaw is Bosch. Seriously good stuff. Right? I can do this like a like a sewing machine. And that ability to just give it a little bit of power when I need it, just to start off. I couldn't do that with, uh, my last one cost $15. Can you believe you could buy a power tool for $15? I bought risotto, like the rice to eat that's more expensive than something as technologically advanced as this. You boil up some rice and you can charge more than for something like this. It's amazing, don't you think? Anyway, my favorite set of power tools. I don't get sponsored by the way, it's, I'm not interested in that. Uh, but I do like them. It's the green and, uh, green and gold, green and red, you know, Christmas colors, I like them. Um, remember the ads you used to get? Remember the great ads? You know, Sid Crow, you cannot hand a man a grander spanner. Give me my Makita back, Mac. That's my wife, can you believe it? She had a drill when I married her. Anyway. 